So tell me, how, how did you get into the field of sustainability in business? How, how did that come about? The simple truth is, is that the more that you think about what corporations have to do to prepare for the future, the more you realize that the way that they deal with challenges um, like poverty, like the environment, uh, are going to be key to their success. How interested are businesses in actually changing their business models to meet those challenges, or how much are they being dragged into it? What, what, what's their motivation? There are many reasons why organisations find it difficult to do stuff you know, in the society. Um, one is a question of legitimacy. You know, some business people say, well, actually, that's government's role. That's not our role. Why, why would we, we're not, sh we shouldn't be expected to do that. And also in the case of the US, for example, corporations specifically are there to, to create shareholder value. So, um, and at the same time, there's a huge amount of short-term challenges that they face from the marketplace. And, you know, frankly, business schools and London Business School would be an example of that, have not really trained leaders over the last decades to think about their role in society. But I think that we're beginning to see a sea change, uh, and that's caused in part by the obvious severity of the challenges that we face. Uh, and also because there's a growing awareness, I think, on the part of, of, of business people that actually they have a role to play in the world. And there's a growing uh, set of role models of, of, of companies who are doing stuff that actually, I think, over the next five or six years will be, in a sense, a beacon to how other organisations behave. So when you've, you've done this body of research now into these 60, 60 yeah. companies, so, so what are the key lessons or, or issues that have come out of that research? It seems to me that organisations, good organisations, that are able to, will be able to, to sustain themselves over the coming decades, do three things. The first thing is that they build inner resilience. Uh, and by inner resilience, I mean that they become the very best that they can be. Uh, and that's absolutely crucial because an organisation can't make any um, contribution to society unless it's whole itself, unless it's strong itself, just in the same way as we as people can't. We can't help others if we can't also help ourselves. So the second anchoring point is the way that they anchor themselves in their communities. And by communities, I mean their neighbourhoods, their physical neighbourhoods, and I also mean their supply chain. Because frankly, for most corporations now, the supply chain hits can hit millions of people. And then the third is really addressing global challenges. Isn't there essentially a, a problem there that actually the business is there to take power and, and keep power, whereas actually dealing with these issues is about letting go of some of that power? I think that, you know, I think you're absolutely right. And I think that the question of power really sits at the heart of, of, of corporate legitimacy. What is it there to do? How does it do it? Um, and how does it affect the, the, the lives of many people? So I think, you know, these are very, very complicated issues. Issues, uh, you know, and frankly, sometimes we, we feel we don't like corporations, and sometimes the people who are in them don't like them. But the simple truth is that if you t look at the, the major stakeholders in the world today, large corporations are one of the most important sort of communities of people that we have. And I believe that we should have expectations of how they step up and they should also have expectations themselves of their role. How do you think, how important is ethics at the heart of this and how do, how do companies drive it into the business so actually you do get that sort of the coming together of a business rather than different things happening in different parts? It's terribly difficult to get everybody aligned and I think that we simplify organisations if we think that everybody inside is, is highly aligned. And so the question of how do you bring values about sustainability, for example, into an organisation is a really important one. And in some cases, you know, it's up to the CEO. So what, what is the role of leadership and, and what is good leadership now? We've now written 60 cases about how companies are operating in those three spheres. And almost always there's somebody who has stood up. And sometimes they're at the top of the organisation and sometimes they're at the begin at, in the middle of a company. But almost always our stories begin with one person saying, I absolutely believe in this and I want this to happen. What do we know about those people? One is that when I look at those leaders, they are people who, who I would say have taken 
both an outer journey and an inner journey. Now, business schools and corporations are very good at the outer journey. You know, we're very good at training people in, you know, business strategy and, uh, and how they do um, accounts and so on. And that, by the way, is really important because if a leader can't do that, then you don't have a corporation. The inner journey is really about how the leader has found their voice, their courage, their authenticity. And what we've found is that that inner journey seems to be really important for people who have been prepared to stand up. So when, we've, when I've talked to leaders who I think are making a difference, they almost always tell me about their own personal journey. And very often, that journey includes what we might call crucible experiences. And by that, I mean that things have happened to them in their lives that have given them the courage to now stand up and say, I'm prepared to do that. And, you know, some organizations are just really great at understanding this. And it seems to me, you know, one of the challenges that we face in corporations is that we're really good at doing the outer journey stuff, but we're not very good at doing the inner journey stuff. And that's because, you know, we, we give leaders very little feedback about themselves. You know, they're surrounded by power structures. Um, they're under incredible short-term pressure. And we're asking them constantly to play these roles of the person who knows everything. And it really takes somebody who's courageous and authentic to say, I believe we need to do something about this. And by the way, I, okay, I'm an optimist, but I think that over the next five or six years, you're going to see more and more corporate leaders stepping up. And that's because the thing that influences a leader most is their peer group. And we are beginning to see leaders around the world stepping up. And on, on you being a bit too over-optimistic, the, there's a worry that the people like Paul Pullman who are standing up, they're, they're going to be cut off because yeah. actually if they have one bad set of figures, people yeah. are going to say, oh, it's because they're not concentrating on the profit. So actually, there's an opportunity, but also there's a substantial risk of people not standing up. I agree with you. You know, these ideas, these initiatives have to be baked into the, the organization. And I think companies need to talk more about them. And, and, and part of the book that I'm writing at the moment is about that, is actually to say to people, do you realize that corporations are capable of making a positive and significant contribution. But of course, you know, they let you down. One of the cases in my book is Standard Charter Bank, which is, has done more for preventable blindness in the developing countries of the world than, than any other corporation in the world. It has uh, been, you know, part of saving the, 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 the sight of literally millions of people. It's an extraordinary story of how individual members of Standard Charter Bank all around the world have put their money, their time, their effort into saving preventable blindness. And last week, I opened the, the, you know, the newspaper to see what was happening in the States in terms of Standard Charter Bank and, and the allegations about, about them. And frankly, you know, I almost actually cried. And I almost actually cried because it's so frustrating um, that you're trying to, to show what companies can do that's great, and yet at the same time they can do things which are, don't meet their own requirements in terms of their own sort of values. And I, and I thought long and hard about this, and, and the conclusion I came to is that we cannot see corporate, we can't think about a corporation as a person. You know, Standard Charter Bank is not one person, it's hundreds of thousands of people with you know, millions of transactions, many, many uh, uh, ways of behaving. And in a way, we have to realize, not exactly that it's schizophrenic because that's also making it sound like a person, but actually companies are complex and just like governments and just like NGOs, there are things about them we can be proud of and there are things about them that we can be disappointed with. And I think it's that level of understanding, really, that we as citizens who look at Lord, large corporations have to understand. How do you drive that into the culture so that actually yeah. uh, middle management is accepted you're a whole person? Actually, if you bring out those core values, you actually get a better company right through. And really, in many ways, the very things that that started this problem, technology and globalization, are also 
potentially ways that we can think about solving them. So in terms of a corporation, if you look at um, a company like Infosys, what Infosys has been doing over the last uh, four years is it's been building communities of people right across their organization to talk about the future of Infosys and what it can do in its communities as well. And it uses quite sophisticated technology platforms to get you know, up to 56,000 people talking to each other about the future. And it seems to me that the sort of social media technology that we've got now can also, within organisations, create these sort of swarms of employees who, who want to make a difference. You said earlier that you're super optimistic and that if we take that as the scenario looking forward, let's say 10 years ahead, how would we know that organisations have changed, that sustainability and this leadership and that, that the, the three spheres you talk about, that they are embedded in a company. Researchers are working on how would you measure, really measure, and then report on what an organisation is doing with regard to sustainability. I think we're going to see very rapid developments in that. I mean, already uh, a bunch of researchers that have just finished uh, 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 answering a very simple question. Over the last 10 years, do companies who say they're operating sustainably, do they have a better return of, of in investment than those who aren't? And already we're seeing that the answer to that is yes. That actually if you invest one pound, one dollar in an organisation that has a sustainability strategy, they are more likely to have a higher rate of return. That's really important to the financial community. And also it's important to us as citizens because we hold in our pensions the shares of those corporations. Is it, are we going to look back and say it was too little, too late? Oh, I, I mean, there's no question of that. And I don't think that corporations are moving fast enough. I don't think they're, they're understanding the scale of the problem. Uh, I don't think that they're mobilising and scaling fast enough. And I think that for people like me and, 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 and you, the job that we have in the next three or four years is to show corporations why this is really important and what they can do and that actually there are real benefits to be had. And then I think you might find an escalation. If they chose to put it at the centre of their strategy, there's no doubt they could make a difference. But they would have to you know, stand up say that this is what their goal is, and then they would have to focus the company on doing that. Great. Thank you very much.